Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to my weekly videos and I hope that you guys had a great and a long break from my uh, from my videos and also I now I'm back with some exciting videos and exciting content hopefully which will be available on FBS website and FBS social media. I would I'd like also to thank uh, everyone and all of you uh, for your kind words on our previous or on my previous uh, video. I appreciate all the comments and all the kind words that you guys uh, uh, posted and now and as always let's kick off this video with the topics that we'll be covering today inflation energy and china slowing down are the main drivers of the markets in the coming weeks what does it mean and what to expect The US dollar index declined on Monday, but technical indicators are still bullish on the short term. Is it the right time to buy? The dollar CAD retraced by over 61.8% of its latest rally, holding above the solid support amid rising a crude oil. Can we risk some long positions? And finally, gold failed to break above its moving averages last week, while the technical indicators remains bullish, but it's still early to decide on a long position. We'll dive into the details after a short commercial break. Beginning with the key events that are controlling the markets. For the past few weeks, we've been hearing a lot about inflation, energy crisis, China slowing down, COVID delta, and so on. And there are a lot of details into these events. However, this is not something bad. And as traders, we need such events and we need such drama and we need come some sort of, unfortunately, uh, to call it a crisis. But uh, we need such events in order to get more volatility and this is what I like and without volatility there will be any uh, there will be no trades to start with uh, for the past a few days market had a wild ride again including in the US despite all the talks of tapering by the Federal Reserve which may happen in November or December now according to the latest FOMC uh, uh, meeting minutes last week but this is also kind of an old news as we already know since june of this year that the federal reserve at some point will likely to start tapering before the end of this year and since june markets recovered well but also traded within a wide range yet the most important factor here is that the market were able to digest such events and with earnings we might see further stabilization and a leaning toward further upside with the possibility of a new all-time high before the Federal Reserve decision or before the Federal Reserve tapering decision either in November or in, uh, uh, in December. However, headwinds from China might be the biggest risk ahead of us, including, of course, growth and uh, the big story that we heard over the past few weeks, which is Evergrande, while default is looming over more property developers, which likely to see a widespread effect all over the world, if it happens, of course, and it also depending on how bad the situation is, despite the fact that, of course, China is still trying to reassure investors all over the world that things are controllable, it's not going to be out of hand. And this is what we will be watching very carefully over the next few days and over the next few weeks. Moving now to the US dollar index, which is, or the index basically declined slightly on Monday on a very thin volume. We didn't see that much of a volatility on Monday while the index has been also declining since last week after it failed to break above its solid resistance area which remains up till now around 94 spot 50 leading the index to post four sessions of consecutive declines while the index is now testing its daily trend line as shown on the next chart however and as we can see on the chart the current declines at least for the time being from my point of view is considered as another short-term retracement to the downside before the upside trend resumes because the market is most likely to keep on pricing in 
the tapering decision before it actually happened either in November or in December. And this is the outlook since June until today. While the current decline may also continue, maybe toward 93 spot 50 or and uh, uh, 93 spot 50, 93 spot 40, but I don't see a deeper retracement than that. And we may see the test of that support in the coming days. But this is when I am planning to start buying the dollar against various major currencies on both the short term and the medium term. On the upside view, at least for the time being, technical indicators are not that bad. And they are remain bullish on the daily chart, but we can say that it just, or they just took uh, a little bit of a break, including the RSI indicator, which also pulled back all the way from being over uh, overbought all the way down towards the 50, but we're still above the 50. As I said, they are just uh, maybe taking just a break. While the first target that I'll be looking for for the time being stands at last week's high, which stands at 94 spot 50, the one that dollar failed to break above it. But if the index managed to retest that again this week, it is more likely to break above that resistance with the possibility to test or to see the 95 on the chart at some point either this week or next week. Moving uh, north of the United States, let's head to Canada. The Canadian dollar is trading at a very interesting level on the daily chart, at least from my point of view. But uh, this is after declining for over or around four weeks in a row. And this is amid, of course, rising crude oil, which is also rising mainly on higher demand from one side and side by side with tight supplies, while OPEC, plus, OPEC and OPEC plus failed to reach an agreement to increase the output. The US dollar cad retraced over 61.8% of its recent rally or the rally that basically started back in June of this year all the way up toward August's high, while the 61.8% Fibonacci stands at 1 spot 23.67. But the technical indicators for the time being are still nearing oversold area, but after four weeks amid also oh, after four weeks of consecutive decline, it might be also five weeks if it uh, continued to decline this week, it is definitely not the right time to short the pair or to be shorting the pair anytime uh, anytime soon in fact i'm actually looking to risk some longs between or around one spot 2370 all the way down toward 12350 uh, 12340 also or uh, or so over the next a few days and i'll be looking for a quick nice jump after this decline well i'll be looking for a target somewhere around one spot 25 at least which represents the 100 day and the 200 day moving average on the daily chart and they're both are confluencing at the same level finally let's talk about uh, my favorite topic which is gold which had also another wild ride over the past a few weeks until it stabilized finally around 1750 1740 dollars an ounce as we can see on the chart Last week, gold it tried to break the key resistance area, including its moving averages, the 50, the 100, the 200 day moving average on the daily chart, but it also failed to do so, leading gold to decline all the way back to its support area one more time. But at the same time, the key support area right now stands between 1750, 1740, and this is the area that you know, this this is the area that should remain solid for gold to stay within its bullish outlook, at least on the short term. In the meantime, the technical indicators also remains bullish. However, they are not bullish enough yet to execute a trade. Since gold has been also trading within this range, but at the same time, we are leaning toward a new long position if gold stabilizes further this week. And if so, we will send out a signal, not only on the short term, but also on the long term or medium term, just like the one that we were sending over the past a few months. Anyway, this is it for this uh, quick uh, weekly video market update. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Again, also, uh, uh, please stay tuned as we have a new content coming up uh, on, um, on our channel, including uh, a daily live session on YouTube. And for also FBS clients, we will have uh, a direct Zoom links or uh, Zoom meetings will be uh, out for FBS clients via email. You can also follow us on our social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube to get the latest economic releases, reports, and analysis. I'll see you again next time. Have a good one.